It's a great industry. It's a feel-good industry. It's a progressive industry. You have to be genuine. You have to have integrity and you just have to make sure that you're providing a quality service. Welcome to the Solar Maverick Podcast. I'm your host, Benoit Thanjan, and I'm excited to have our guest today. I have Suzanne Water. She is actually the Vice President of Business Development at my company, Renew Energy. And we actually used to work together at Vanguard Energy Partners. It's crazy. It's like eight or nine years ago or 10 years ago. It's crazy how like time flies by. I don't know if you remember like those late nights where we're working on the public RFPs and I'm working with you on the financial response and Juan's there and we're trying to print and put all, all those documents. So I'm excited to have Suzanne on the show and get her unique perspective. Suzanne, welcome to the Solar Maverick podcast. Hi, Benoit and everybody else. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being on it. Can you talk about your educational experience and work experience, how you got into solar and what you did at Vanguard Energy Partners, and then obviously working for your dad's business, and then what got you here today at Renew Energy? Sure. So I graduated from Rutgers University with a degree in economics. And actually, my first job out of college was in solar at Vanguard Energy Partners. They're a national installer based in Branchburg, New Jersey, that's built 105 megawatts worth of projects. They have 30 megawatts in their pipeline. They also do O&M services. Predominantly, most of the work has been done in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. I apologize. Susan. That's okay. No, their resume is quite impressive. So. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so my first job out of college was with Vanguard, um, and then I left solar for a few years. I was working for my dad's company. We do outsource medical billing and financial consulting specifically for home health and hospice agencies, and now I've found my way back to solar at Renew Energy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk about like what made you come back to solar? Obviously, right out of school, you mentioned when we talked before it was to get a job and then you really had a love for solar. And then obviously you're relatively new and we're new energy starting the beginning of September. But what made you want to get back into the solar industry? Okay. So solar is kind of a hard industry not to fall in love with once you get involved in it. I feel like I can't honestly answer this question without delving a little bit into the serendipitous meeting between you and my sister. <laughs> yeah, <definitely. laughs> um, my sister actually just became a licensed real estate agent and she and Benoy coincidentally bumped into each other while they were walking down the street. My sister was actually an hour early to host her very first open house. And I feel like that's relevant because if she hadn't been early, she never would have bumped into you. So you were her first client ever at the open house <laughs> and you were wearing your Renew Energy shirt. And I guess she noticed the logo and that it said energy because I had been in solar energy for so long and my husband's actually still in solar energy. So I think she'd asked you, oh, Renew Energy, what do you do? And you said solar. And uh, she said, my brother-in-law's in solar. And then you said, who is he? I probably know him. And it turned out you did know him. And you said, oh my gosh, is your sister Suzanne? And she said, yes. And then you said, well, I need to get in touch with her. I want to hire her. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after I had texted my sister to find out how her open house was going, and she said, my first client was Benoit. And that's not a very common name. So I said, Definitely. Benoit from Vanguard. Yeah. And she said, yeah. And she sent me a picture of your business card information. So then I was like, this was just too coincidental to not follow up with. I called you and we got to talking and it just seemed like a really, a really neat opportunity. And to be quite honest with you, after leaving Vanguard, I never quite had the same passion for my work that I did when I was in solar. So um, just the whole thing with you meeting my sister and then talking to you and we hadn't spoken in years. And yes, we haven't but once we started talking and it was like, wow, I felt like, like you said, I was just with Benoit last <laughs> night doing RFPs. Um, in so, Branchburg. Uh, exactly. Yes. It's kind of weird because that's kind of, it was like several years we haven't spoken. And then it seemed like when we talked on the phone that just it was right like picked up. up right. And we've worked together before. So it's still the same sort of working relationship. And, exactly. you know, obviously like Suzanne was the A player at Vanguard Energy Partners. And, you know, I was excited that there could be an opportunity for you to come on board. And actually, what's kind of crazy about that was I left church and That's I was right. thinking, oh, man, I have to give Suzanne or Jesse a call because Jesse was saying potentially that you would be interested. And then 
I randomly go to this open house. It's funny because I kind of saw the open house sign. I was debating, and then your sister actually then said, hey, do you want to come for Which the open house? Which doesn't surprise me, yeah. So then I, I came to the open house. And th- another weird thing about that was like, she was saying that the whole time when I first introduced my name, she's thinking to herself, she knows Had heard name that name before. Before. So then when, you know, the whole thing, it was just, wow, there must be a God because it was like so coincidental for that all to happen. Exactly. So uh, yeah, definitely. That's like an interesting story. And can you also actually talk about, it's interesting as well, that your husband who, you know, I've worked with in the past, he also worked at Vanguard Energy Partners. He's also in the solar industry. So that also you were mentioning as well as one of the reasons why to... Um, getting back into solar. Getting yeah. Back into- obviously conversations are always revolving around solar in our house because that's what he does. I was so involved in it for a while. And then to be kind of removed, I always felt like I, I wanted to be back in the conversation, but didn't always know what to say. So that was also a plus getting back into solar, just feeling like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to have relevant things to say now when we're, <laughs> when we're talking about all this stuff. Um, just giving another more of a common ground for different conversations within the household. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because you were joking to me that you were teaching him about corporate PPAs. Oh, yes. Well, I was. when um, After our call, he was laughing at me after we hung up the phone because he was like, you're so excited. And I said, yeah, it's nice to feel excited about work like this again. And after you and I were on the phone, I just, you know, was quickly like doing some research on some of the things we were talking about. And one of the things was corporate PPAs. And I was asking him, well, what do you know about them? And he was kind of like, he was excited for me to start schooling him on things again, because that's kind of how (laughs) it started off. (laughs) (laughs) And I think that's interesting too, right? So uh, Suzanne's husband, Jesse, actually works for a company called PV Pros, which is located very close to our office. We're in Jersey City, New Jersey, they're in Hoboken, New Jersey, but he's focused more on the operation and maintenance of solar projects where, you know, corporate PPAs is not something normally that he would look into Exactly. because right. really corporate PPAs have been stimulating development of renewable energy projects. And since we're on the development and consulting side, we're focused on that because that's really where a lot of projects have been able to be developed and financed because of these long-term power purchase agreements that companies like Microsoft, Google, and Amazon have procured energy from a, a solar project. So it's interesting because you're also actually coming from a different perspective of the industry, you know, and he is as well. So it's pretty interesting because... Makes us very well-rounded Yeah, well-rounded. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> And by the way, you both met at Vanguard Energy yes, Partners, we did. As, as we know. When you first started at Vanguard, you were like the person who focused on proposals. But then it seemed like, you know, as time went on that you did a lot of other things, which is one of the reasons, too, why, you know, I wanted to work with you. Because working at a sort of an entrepreneurial company where you're not just defined into one role, you have to do a lot of different things. And I know that you love that and you get excited about that. So can you talk about like, you know, what your original role was at Vanguard Energy Partners and then over time, like, you know, what it changed to be? Because I felt like you were involved in a lot of different aspects. I also felt like, too, it felt like you were managing people, even though you didn't have people report to you. That, yes, (laughs) for sure. Um, And getting people to get stuff within a certain time. Uh, We always actually were talking about one. We used to joke about friendly reminders because I actually didn't coin that phrase. It was Kristen who worked there before me, but always sending out friendly reminders that were kind of passive aggressive, get this to me now type (laughs) things. Actually, yeah, I wore a lot of different hats at Vanguard, which was coming straight out of college was a great motivational role for somebody just getting a ton of different experience. I started off largely responding to public RFPs, which can be a daunting task at times. But responding to the public... why could it be daunting, I think? I know why it could be daunting. Yeah, but for those that don't... Versus like a private RFP or like a proposal to a private company. Right. So for those of you that don't know, when you're responding to public RFPs, first of all, to win the project, it's just strictly based off of lowest price. So it doesn't matter how good the proposal was, how many hours that you put behind putting together this great comprehensive proposal. It just all comes down to lowest price, lowest bid. 
And you needed to put together all all this different documentation. So a lot of times our responses were two inch binders worth of information that we were compiling for the people requesting the proposal. And it would be like, you needed 15 paper copies and two digital copies. And there was a very strict deadline. I feel like you probably delivered a couple of those oh, RFPs. Yeah, so like, we Speed were together, but don't get pulled get over because yes. you'll postpone the, the hand in. But um, it just could be a daunting task. And when you're waiting for responses for subcontractors, they were also like, to push the time limit and you get those right before the deadline. And then when you were working on handing in the digital copies, you'd have everything set up to put on the CD-ROM or the USB. And then we'd have to pull, well, we're pulling this subcontractor out because he didn't get us the bid in time. So we're putting in our understudy and it was like, okay, well now I have to completely reconfigure everything that we've had set up digitally. And it was a big rush in every sense of that word in terms of like an adrenaline rush. Like, are we going to get this in on time? And then literally a rush to the finish line. So I started working for Vanguard when they were still relatively new. So it's a good way to break into the market you're trying to get into because like I said, the hiring is based solely on lowest bid. So we responded to a lot of public RFPs. Then I would do the submission and the proposal generation for private proposals. We even responded to private RFPs. I dealt a lot with our insurance company, our bonding company, I did a lot then too with our contract review and I I was the primary point of contact for our legal counsel. I redlined and reviewed countless contracts. I dealt with our subcontractors on a daily basis. Pretty much anything you can imagine, any job that needed extra hands on, I did at Vanguard. Even I was laughing thinking about this. I used to do like the grocery shopping when we first started (laughs) off, you know, just to make sure the office had enough coffee or whatever have you that the fridge had enough of the essentials in it. So pretty much if you name it, I probably did some fraction of the job at some point in my career at Vanguard. I think that's one of the great things about Vanguard is it was a sort of new growing company and you know you take on a lot of roles. I mean like for example I was originally in Vanguard Energy Capital which was like the financing arm of Vanguard Mm -hmm. Energy Partners but then I also did business development. I did also help with Noveda Mm -hmm. on stuff so I think that was a great thing even for me who was more experienced also I was helping with like construction and construction schedules and things like that yeah so it was good because there was no sort of defined role like I felt like if someone had like the confidence in you in anyone at Vanguard that you would have the opportunity to kind of do other things which I think is great especially when you're first starting out out of school it was priceless because I always felt valued in my work, in my opinion. It was a great, great experience. You hear people get out of college and then they get this job they think is going to be great. And then they're nothing more than like a glorified intern. And that was definitely not my experience at Vanguard. And I feel like, um, like you were saying, people were always willing to help. It was like a real team effort at the company. So yeah, definitely. And, and yeah, it's interesting. Everyone listened to everyone's opinions, no matter, you know, how much experience you have or right. what you did, which was also great as well. And I mean, and also with the public RFPs, like everything had to be perfect because if and it I'm a wasn't, perfectionist, so it was a yes, good, it was a good a job per- for me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was going to say. You know, Suzanne was great on making sure like there would be some points that I wasn't actually paying attention to from the financing side. And she would clearly, hey, there's a section 7A3 oh, yeah. to, you didn't actually answer. Can you do that as a friendly reminder? Can you have a friendly to me that hour? <laughs> I hate to say this because, you know, we're a renewable energy company, but we probably wasted our fair share of paper on preparing those public RFP responses. But yeah, those friendly reminders still stuck in your head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, uh, actually, you have told me a couple of times, Benoit, as a friendly reminder, <laughs> well, we, you've worked with Renew Energy, and I, I would laugh when you said that, so <laughs> it's pretty funny. And can you talk about like some of the work that you're doing at Renew Energy? I know, obviously, it's only been since the beginning of September, but uh, how's the role different, or what exactly are you doing? Obviously, it's a different type of company. Yeah. I mean, some things are the same in the sense that I feel like I'm still wearing a few different hats, which is good. I like that. I'm the VP of business development for Renew Energy. Like you said, though, I'm still kind of a adjusting to my role, if that's the right word. So I feel like it's going to evolve as I get more into the role. But all things business development, um, I'm doing a lot of research, which has actually been great, especially getting back into the industry out of after taking a little bit of a hiatus. The research has definitely been 
good at getting me back up to speed and just diving right back in. I'm doing a lot of the SREC management for the projects that we manage the SRECs for. Proposals back in my proposal <laughs> role. What am I missing? Yeah, you talked about research, obviously, like the corporate PPAs. Obviously, we're always trying to get ahead of the trend, solar plus storage. Right, right, right. We're both working on the research and a piece for that. Business development, where it comes to building relationships with potential partners. We just came from a lunch with the EPC that reached out to Suzanne. And, you know, we're also trying to build those relationships with CNI customers and landowners, potentially looking at solar and we're kind of looking at the customer acquisition from, you know, more of where we have some sort of relationship or someone could introduce us or meeting them at different events and things like that. So Suzanne's helping with that strategy of doing that. So, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, going on to a different topic, uh, obviously Vanguard was pretty diverse as far as gender, but as you know, there's not a lot of women in the industry. What advice would you have for someone who, who's looking to get into the solar industry? So I guess I feel like my advice would be not just gender specific. I guess first and foremost, it's a great industry to be involved in. It's a feel good industry. It's a progressive industry. That was one of the things I loved about solar. When I started working in solar, people would say, oh, well, what are you doing now? And I would say, oh, I work for a solar energy company. And everybody was so intrigued. They just want you to talk about it. Renewable energy, I feel like when you start talking about it, there's nothing really negative people say about it. But that being said, you have to be genuine. You have to have integrity and probably above all, I know this in talking to my husband who's involved in the solar O&M. So he's like the last piece of the puzzle. So they always see like the completed work. You have to perform quality work, no matter what type of service you're providing within this industry, because it's now so diverse. There's people in finance, development, construction, engineering, solar O&M, whatever service you're providing, you just have to make sure that you're providing a quality service. Because now I feel like there's a dime a dozen. If you're not doing the work the way it's supposed to be done, it's going to be found out. And people that you're working for will have no problem replacing you because they'll be able to find somebody else that can do the same job. But that being said, also don't mistake quality for affordability or don't overlook quality for affordability. These systems are designed to last 20 to 30 years, but it's not going to happen if your people are putting out shoddy work. So just make sure that you're doing quality work. And like I said, you, you get what you pay for. Yeah, definitely. That's so true. And it's all about, as you said, too, like being transparent. And uh, as we spoke about before and really doing quality work, it's a small industry. We all know each other. So it's about solar is like a close knit. It seems like a close knit community. So building your network, which I guess goes back to quality and having integrity. And it's about who you know. So if you can establish those quality relationships with people, when a job comes up that somebody needs, there's so many different aspects of solar. So somebody needs a developer or somebody needs somebody to maintain the system, they're going to remember like, I met Benoit or I met Suzanne and we had a really nice meeting. I'm going to give them a call. So yeah, it's definitely establishing a good network and being able to maintain a good network would be another suggestion that I'd have. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And it's interesting because a lot of our business has come through our existing clients, but then also referrals from other clients. So that's the easiest sale when people put a good word or or recommending you for a job. So definitely. Right. Well, and look at, I mean, this now, this working relationship now, we knew each other from Vanguard. Yes. So maintaining that good network that, I mean, and here we are. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> here we are eight years, yeah. nine years later. <laughs> so let's see what the next 10 years. Bring. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting. And I think also one thing too, is solar is growing like exponentially. So there's so much opportunity and it's just in its early stages, especially you know, as solar reaches like grid parity and costs continue to go down and the technology continues to get better. And so, yeah, definitely very exciting. What trends are you seeing in the solar industry? I mean, you haven't been in the industry for like two or three years. I know it's still obviously very early, but does it seem like different than it was in the past? It seems like the industry is just growing on an exponentially fast rate. I saw that pick up when I started working at Vanguard, um, just from the first couple of months I was working there and then seeing how just all of a sudden solar was like this big wave that was all of a sudden coming. And then everybody was looking to get involved in solar. You had people from all different trades trying to get involved in solar. So it was growing fast then. And then me being out of the industry for the few years that I was, and then coming back into it, it's just, it seems like it's growing faster than ever. So Right. Fast forward another couple of years, you were saying, let's see what the next 10 years has to bring. I'm interested to see what the next three years has to bring because it seems like it's going to be growing even faster than it was. So, 
Yeah, it's been pretty crazy. If I look at the time that you were last at Vanguard and now, it's like just crazy how many more players have gotten into it, how more complicated it's gotten, how comfortable people are with solar. Yeah. Before, it was kind of a big thing. It was a harder sell, so. whereas now, not so much. And even the technology, I remember, I can't even tell you the biggest wattage of panel when I was last there, but it was like two something. And now I feel like even when Jesse would come home and talk to me about these panels, I was like, oh my gosh, they're up to that already? Yeah. Like. 380 watt panels yeah. are pretty standard. So like from the time that you started, even the prices of these panels, like we're talking about like 42 to 43 cents per watt. I think back when you maybe left Vanguard, it was still over a dollar oh, a watt. Oh, absolutely. So the prices have gone down dramatically. Yeah. And financing has gotten comfortable and there's a lot more different financing options and more states. Absolutely. Because yeah. investors, people are a little more familiar with how, you know, they can work it. So um that's definitely a huge thing that I've seen. And like I said, I've only I've only been out for a couple of years, so. Yeah, so definitely the next three years, it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah. So. Well, Suzanne, thank you for your time on the podcast. Is there any parting words that you would like to say? How's your first experience? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I was, when you just said any parting words, I was going to say Carpe Solum. I feel like that was my, I kind of coined that when I was uh, working at Vanguard, I used to have that in my email signature. And then when we hired um, our VP of sales and marketing, he actually approached me and asked, oh, where did you get that from? And I was like, where did I get that from? I just put it in there. Yes. Like I, but um, Carpe Solum sees the sun. So I guess that would be my. Oh, wow. That. That's a great one. That's really <laughs> deep. Yeah. This is one of the best ones I've heard. So thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate your time on the Thanks podcast. Thanks for having me, Benoit. <laughs> and, and we'll talk soon. Okay. Thanks. thanks. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. If this content is delivering value to you, please go to iTunes and Stitcher Radio and leave us a five-star review. That helps us build this community, and that's what we're all about right now, building this community as big as we can to deliver as much value as we can. Thank you.